Assalamu alaikum. So we are going to now talk about the hydrostatic pressures on cylindrical surfaces. It's the same thing, same approach as we have done it for the rectangular surfaces. Now the surface is more curved rather than taking the area. Now we have a component of area, same surface of width B, but the area now becomes a very, very small to DL. It's just like you can use it for a line. Now to find the focus or the concentrated point of R, we need to find out where exactly R is first going to swing about like the two moments of inertias. Now, first thing is we have to find the position of R with respect to X and then position of R with respect to Y. We know the B is constant, that is the width of the plate. Now we need to find the pressure that varies as we move L along X axis. The best way to find L along X axis is if you look at this thing, L along X axis and then L along Y axis. If you look at this small DL, in this figure right here, you will see this is a small length L that is moving along x axis and along y axis. So, you are going to find the pressure acting along y axis and the pressure along the x axis. Using these two uh, uh, standing, you have to understand the pressure along x axis is going to be constant, while the pressure along y axis is going to change as you are going further deeper into as h is changing. By these two, you can find the generalized position of the value of uh, x, uh, the generalized position of, uh, you need a combined value of r, because you have the value of, of uh, p, as you have calculated using this relation, px and py, you're going to find the value, uh, you know the thickness or the width of the plate, that is b, now you have to find the value of r, where exactly the r lies. And you can find this thing on a two-dimensional surface. The best way, as you remember, is the Pythagorean approach. And this r can easily be calculated of this curved surface. Now we have, the, this is similar to the rectangular surfaces, and if we take the curved surface, uh, we have found out that it's just the taking this small area in two dimensional and find the depth variation of any surface. So let's look at a, a shape of any or surface of any shape. Now if you look at this thing, we need to find again the R, the correct position of R. We know that if the surface is moving along X axis, the pressure is almost same. But if you go below, moving along the Z axis, that is H is increasing, as you move down the plane, the pressure is increasing, the magnitude is increasing. So for a small y, change in y, you can find a moment of rotation of the surface, this is for the surface, and the rotation due to the pressure forces. And once you find these things, you are going to find out that the moment of pressure force is at a different position than the center of mass, or the center of the surface. So same thing you need to find the value of dA for different pressure up and down and you will find out that y prime that is the pressure for the center surface is a function of y p x dy as you know p is again you know the value of pressure uh, let me value of the pressure that is uh, rho g and y gives you the value of h x is there as thickness you know moving all about this area surface is changing as you can see x is also changing with respect to the exposed area and dy as you move actually down the y the only thing you have to replace is px the pressure of x as you move down uh, you, as you, have, you should know that x is also changing from point to point as you go down. This will give you the position of y, that is y prime, in x y frame with respect to y prime. So I hope this would uh, suffice for the two of different form of surface areas. <coughs> this this is where you will further see into uh, example, further see these type of numericals and examples. We have solve examples and. Uh, I hope the concepts will further improve.
The final steady thing we have to discuss about is the buoyancy. You all know the buoyancy is a major part that may uh, keep the ships afloat on the surfaces and you should remember that our buoyancy was is given into definition of buoyancy. Or the first, this phenomena was analyzed first by Archimedes. Everybody knows that part. Uh, and how did he introduce this uh, buoyancy? And uh, let me give you an illustration. Now, now, if body of a fluid could be sucked out from within the closed cavity and replaced simultaneously by the force which it exerts on the boundary of the cavity. The equilibrium of the surrounding fluid would not be disturbed. Well, that is true. Furthermore, if a body, a free, or the free body diagram of the fluid portion of the removed body is shown right here, you will see it is making equal and opposite reaction. Now, this amount of removal forces is going to generate a bound forces. Now, the displacement of the buoyancy is very important. So, how do you find that? What, how it, the buoyancy force is working? If you put this person submerged uh, in water, the amount of water it is going to displace, means this volume it is going to displace is going to create a violent forces of the same volume. So, how much force? If it is water, you know the density of water, the gravitational field, this means you take this volume. And you find this times rho g mass per unit volume is equal to density. And you take this, since this is specific volume for meter cube, you find the value of g times volume, you find the mass. So, force times is equal to, in fact, m times rho. So, m is equal to rho times volume times g. So, this will become your weight. This is for which the buoyancy is going to work on your ship, the displaced volume. Now, if this is oil, then oil has lower density. What if it is a thicker oil that sinks at the bottom of water, like mercury or heavy liquids, then it will have higher buoyancy. Now, you have to also remember the center of mass, the center of gravity, and now the center of buoyancy are three different things. If your mass has a higher center and center of weight is lower, then during water waves or when the ship is trying to open, these two things are going to create a moment. As a result, what will happen, if you look at this diagram, if your center of mass is very, very high and the center of gravity is lower than center of mass, what is happening? It is going to create a moment about mass. This is going to push the moment this way. As a result, it is going to straight through. But this G is going to pull a counter force moment and it is going to bring the ship back. But if you have a center of mass below the center of gravity, what is going to happen? It is going to pull the ship backward and it is also going to sink the ship or topple the ship. So you have to make sure. Uh, the center of mass is at slightly higher than the center of gravity. So the question is, what is the center of gravity? As we have studied before and analyzed, the center of gravity is the point where gravitational force will tend to hold or react to the body. The center of mass is a simple systematic addition and uh, position uh, positioning of the symmetric bodies. You know, take, take different. For your uh, centers of different symmetric bodies to find out exactly where the center of mass should exist. The center of mass does not exist, is not the same in the gravitational force, similarly not the same under the buoyancy force. It can, has its own properties as we have discussed this at the very beginning of this chapter. So you must remember, it does not uh, objects like ship irregular surfaces of massive areas or volumes does not mean they are going to share the same point, so-called center of mass, to be similar to center of gravity. So please uh, try to understand this thing, it is an important phenomenon. So let us go for certain examples.